Good morning, everyone. This is Anne Marie. Today is Monday, November the 12th, and we are looking at SPY this morning. Now, we've got uh, a breakdown. This is from an image that I posted on Friday, maybe? Friday evening. And I show this formation and this formation. Now, on the daily, this line right here is the 200 daily SMA. And because of the four hour chart here, we don't have all the data that pulls it all uh, forward. But this is it. And we have closed underneath the 200 for two days. And so the question is we did this for two days, and on the third day, we popped and then began a run to the upside. So here we are again. Now, my first thought is well, can I see anything visually? telling underneath that tells me things are going to move in one direction or another, and I do not. So this is the reason that I've said that technical indicators are not allowing us to see exactly what it is that the market has planned. The bond markets are closed today, and so in my experience, when we trade on days that the bond markets are closed, and unusual moves occur that the bond market does not anticipate or is not pricing in, they do reverse. So this may be a day that if it ends up popping or doing something extraordinary, we need to make sure that we don't give it a lot of weight until we see the bond market respond tomorrow. Because as we know, credit rules the world. So that's why we watch the bond market because um, those guys are normally the smartest guys in the room, albeit a few of them that are sitting a little bit behind the times these days. Still, we can take a look at the bond markets and know that uh, pretty much we're going where we're, we're supposed to be going. Now, that being said, here we have some noisy information right here and some noisy information right here. So we're going to have to make a choice about what to do if it breaches and holds this region. Above 139 today, I think we've got room to traverse up into this region. Again, very noisy, very messy. Size should not be large in these kinds of spaces. You can add once you get out of a congestion range, but frankly, we have a congestion range that moves from mm, 140, essentially all the way to 143 and a quarter. So that part, a little bit noisy up there. I would say be very, very careful in terms of adding size. You want to look at a very small time frame if you're intraday trading and you want to capitalize on movement, but you don't want to expose yourself greatly. When we have areas of congestion, we want to trade level to level, okay? Because we don't know whether something's going to break out or break down, we want to trade that level to level area, and that's it. If you're the person that likes to say, hey, listen, I'm here at the top, I want to short, then that's when you'll take the trade at the top of one level. If you're the person that says, hey, listen, I like to take uh, the bounce off support, then you're the person that goes long at the baseline level. If we fail to recapture this region here, uh, outside of this noise, looks like it's about mm, 138, right? It looks like we'll come down here and retest the 50. Frankly, I know a lot of people are talking about the market falling to the floorboards. I'm not really sure about that. What I want to say is this. Standard retracement. I know I sound like a broken record, but you know, like I said the other day, who'd have thought when we were up here that we were going to end up down here, except for the fact that we're retracing a large wave, 61.8 standard retracement event. Could it be that we bounce off 50? Yes, 50 is also a standard retracement event, and a lot of us use that area. Now, why do I have this region? When we have all this sort of noise, I default back to the 50% range between any two major FIB levels. The bottom line for us is if we breach that level, which is why I, why I said 139, if we breach and hold the level, usually means we are going back to test the FIB above it. If we come back into this FIB and we fail, we are going to have downside measures or we're going to get caught in a channel. What's the trade today? You know, typically on these kinds of days, 
we want to look for things that are a bit obvious like a gap fill event so let's put that in try to start with these charts a bit clean so we know why they're sitting there from the videos is that right sometimes a snap the grid gives us a little bit of trouble all right let's uh, move this up so it's not in the way all right there we go so um, yeah we should fill the gap if we fill the gap watch for the bounce up there this morning the pre-markets are up just a little bit bond markets down just a little bit um, the futures the 30-year Treasury bond futures that is and so that's pretty much where we are right here a little bit of noisy action don't expect a big day and if we do have a big day Expect a bit of retracement tomorrow when uh, all the big guns get back to work. All right. Take care and good luck trading.